Okay, now it's on. Okay, good. Alright, hello everyone, it's Fade. Welcome to a brand new video. Today's video, we're going to be talking about animation. Um, and we're, specifically, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be showing you guys how to animate. A lot of people have been asking me this, despite me being a pretty small YouTuber. So, I decided to just do this for you guys, and uh, hopefully, you guys can learn as well, and you guys can make animations yourself. I am not the greatest teacher, so please, if you guys do not understand anything, put in the comments below, or even join my Discord, because, you know, uh, you gotta shield the Discord somehow. <laughs> anyway, so, um, now, I... Okay, where should I start with this? Anyway, the first thing that you need is your software. Now, obviously, you're gonna need a couple of things. You're gonna need your main animator, which is right here for me. You're gonna need a way to put your sprites in the, into here, so I got paint.net. Paint.net is a really good software, it's not only free, uh, but at the same time it has a lot of cool features and stuff, even for things like thumbnails and stuff, which I make my thumbnails using Paint.net, so let me find a good thumbnail for example. <laughs> um, you can make thumbnails like this, There, like there's just like so much that you could do with the software, so I would recommend it, and on top of that, again, it's free, so like there's really no excuse. <laughs> now your animator. Now, I recommend Flash. Pivot is cool, but Pivot's definitely uh, a bit difficult for new beginners. I mean, if the more you practice, the more you get better at it. I, I know that, but like, it, it's definitely hard to make a really good animation on Pivot. Like, there are some bangers like Dr. D and a couple of others. I use Macarena Flash 8. Uh, there should be a free way to get, I don't know if it's still available anymore, but low key, like, Flash, like, Flash 8 isn't even, like, sold by Adobe anymore, so I doubt that they would even care, because this is, like, some, like, a really old program that nobody can access anymore. Anyway, so, uh, no matter what Flash you have, uh, uh, Flash 8, CS3, CS6, and Animate, there should pretty much be similar interface. Just click to file, click new, or, or you probably, hold on, let me close this. I uh, know. And you're probably just gonna see something like this for most of your flashes. I think animate's a bit different, but even then, it's still pretty similar. So then, now I want to talk about this. I have a template that I made, uh, because, you know, I tend to notice that, you know, making multiple layers and, you know, setting up the entire thing is, get, gets really annoying if I just made a template for myself. So I'm probably gonna put the description down for you guys. I think I already have this at Google Drive, so you guys can just download it from the Google Drive and then boom. So, it just makes everything easier in all honesty. Anyway, so you have a couple of things here. You have uh, tools, which tools... I don't use much of these, I only use a little bit. Um, you have uh, these things down here. There's a lot of difficult things to get. Like, yeah, you see on screen, I'm going to try and explain them right now. So, let's start off with tools. So, you have your tools here. You have selection tool. Selection tool is basically just selecting things on the uh, canvas over here. Um, uh, sub selection tool. I don't really use it, but I think it's like just like play around with shapes and stuff like that. So, I don't know. Free transform tool, just messing around with stuff. Alright, let me pull up a fight, for example. Let me see. Uh, okay, good. It didn't die. I thought it died. <laughs> anyway, so I'll use this fight, for example. Hold on. Just before I do that, I'm gonna save as. Uh, I might as well explain some stuff in file. Uh, file, basically, um, new, making a new document, opening, opening a document like that, uh, opening recent documents is basically the document that you recently opened, close, just closing out your file, uh, close, all closing all the, uh, files over there, saving, just saving your project, save as, like, saving as a new file, um, save all, saving everything up there, import, importing stuff, so, uh, if I want to import something, I'm like these things either on the stage or into the library uh, which is this over here I think my cursor is showing so my cursor is not showing it might not be showing <laughs> pops up in the in the thing but if it doesn't then that sucks <laughs> export just exporting your like flash publish basically just publishing it onto like a browser nothing really serious there and then so just exiting the, exiting the program Anyway, so free transformation tool is basically um, being able to like, you know, squash, stretch, and move around your sprites, which is some principles of animation. I want to talk about this right here. 
Just because sprite animation is different than traditional animation doesn't mean that you still don't follow like the principles and stuff. There are still principles in animation in traditional animation that transfer over to sprite animation and stick animation. So even though obviously uh, sprites and drawings are different, you still have to you know handle with the traditional uh, principles and stuff. So. Uh, basically, uh, you can squash, uh, and stre uh, stretch, and, you know, you can squash, you know, stuff like that. You can skew like this. Uh, let me see. Uh, there's, like, a little domain point, which, uh, depending on where you put it, it will, like, uh, it, like, so, say, for example, let's say, okay, so, uh, normally if the domain point's, like, in the middle, then it's gonna move like this, right? It's, uh, all, like, most of the parts are gonna move, but this thing is still stagnant, right? So, um, so, say, for example, I move over here, now 18 will move like this, so, her upper torso is kind of moving now, but, like, her body down here is not moving like that. I hope... I hope you guys understand what I mean, but like that's basically how it works. So the, depending on where you put your domain point, that like, that direction won't move and stuff like that. So, uh, uh, so something like this. Yep. And then if you put it up here like so, uh, it'll probably glitch out like this. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it. So now we go on to a uh, line tool, just making a line like that. Uh, lasso tool, nothing really serious. Uh, text tool, making text. Are you gonna glitch out? Okay, I hope it doesn't like pop up in the end in like the actual video. That'd be really nice. So blah blah blah, text, there we go. Circles, just making a circle or oval. Rectangle, making a square or rectangle. You can hold it and you can make a poly star. Um, Pencil, draw, just a pencil tool, paint, just a paint tool, um, paint bucket, just covering something in paint, <laughs> and that's about it. Um, there's the hand tool, which you can look around the stage like this, so if we were to go over here, I would zoom out a little bit, uh, let me see, I'll fix this real fast, so it doesn't work out, there we go. Well, you can just look around the stage like this. Um, and then you can zoom in, so zooming in like this. There we go. Alright. Then you can zoom in like this. Cool. Uh, there's also zoom in options over here, so it doesn't really matter. Anyway, so, now we got it out of the way, let's look down here. Properties, uh, this is like, if you're not clicking anything, so for example, if you go back here, right? If I click 18, then the properties are going to change, uh, then if I wasn't clicking anything. If it, you're, you haven't clicked anything yet, then it's going to look like this. If you clicked on 18, it's going to look like this. Or if you click on any sprite or anything like that. So, basically size is basically the size of your canvas and like how your animation is going to look. I'd recommend a 16 by 9 ratio because 16 by 9 just genuinely looks better than any like other dimensions apart. Also, if you want to upload these on YouTube or anywhere else, uploading them in a 16 by 9 ratio is just way better than uploading them in, um, in something like a 4 by 3 or something like that. So. Uh, background color, uh, you can change it to whatever you want, I just keep it white because I don't really need it, need to change anything with it, so, um, and you can just keep it the same. For frame rate, a lot of people use 24, but I normally just use 30 because I'm just used to 30 at this point. Um, so, yeah, that's about it. And if you want to make it the default, so like, every time like you load it in, you can just click default. But if you're, already, if you're using my template, then you should already be the default anyway. Um, let me see. Uh, publish. You'll be taken to here. Um, here's really important. You want to make sure that uh, audio stream audio events are set to MP3 160 K um, KBS and KBPS uh, and best. This makes sure this makes sure that your audio sounds way better. And because like it's normally set to I think to like uh, like mono or something and like eight and, like sixteen kbps or something. I don't know. It's set to like I forgot what it was set to before, but it's it's not the great settings. So, like, just make your your stuff sound weird. Um, for the stuff up here, curl Z and curl Y, 
undo and redo, cut, basically just deleting something and copying it. Copy, paste, and center, just pasting it. Um, paste um, in place, basically just pasting it where you copied it from. Uh, select all, selecting everything on the screen, find and replace, just finding and replacing something. Timeline, um, you can mess up with some mess with some stuff up here if you want to use um, more uh, shortcuts. Uh, preferences, just your preferences. Um, you can change some stuff here if you want to make yourself comfortable. Not nothing really here that you probably should touch. I think everything here is just kind of uh, you know kind kind of a bit complex. So uh, tools panel, you can change around the tools a little bit. You can add some more tools. I think you can move the poly star tool if you want or change some shortcuts, stuff like that. For font mapping, um, some text uses fonts not installing your system, I'm pretty sure. Uh, if, say for example, <clears throat> if you're using a effect like file, for, for example, uh, let me pull up an effect um, thing. Um, so let's say you know, something that is not like super big. Um, this one. So, for example, this one, right? Uh, so if this text was like a font I didn't have, then it would probably show me an error message. And then you can go up to here and then do this into font mapping. Not crash. Are you gonna crash? Okay, good. Yeah, and then it'll show you the font that you're missing. So that's about it. And if you want to change it to a substitute, then just go ahead. Keyboard shortcuts. Basically, making keyboard shortcuts. Uh, make just changing it to any like keyboard set that you find comfortable I made my own down here so um, I don't make much I only like really use one even that I don't really use it that much so whatever uh, so now go back here view go to um, this is like just basically like what like go to like what's on your timeline so you can now go to the first frame last frame etc etc uh, zoom in zoom out pre self expansion zooming in zooming out uh, magnification basically what's up there uh, okay, mouse, why are you dying on me? <laughs> um, um, preview mode, just previewing stuff. Uh, work area, I uh, don't really know what that is, but just leave it. Rulers, just basically put some rulers around the uh, canvas. Uh, I don't really use it, but you can use it if you want. Grid, just basically a grid right here. Um, nothing too insane about it, just a grid. <laughs> Um, let me see, uh, snapping, just snapping to objects and stuff, it just helps you align stuff a bit better. As we go along, we'll probably learn that a bit more. Uh, and I don't really use these either. So, symbols are basically, um, like, little, like, how should I explain it? It's like, kind of like, so, I guess a good example would be, say for example, right, uh, let me go over here. Okay, right, um, so... Okay, right, so let's say I was animating this 18 kick, right, and I didn't want to like animate it over and over again. Symbols are basically uh, things that store frames so then you don't have to keep redoing things over and over again. Uh, so let me pull up a example. So right, so here, right, so 18 is kicking, uh, so 18 is kicking the symbol, which means I don't have to keep doing it over and over again. Uh, like animating the exact same thing over and over again if I want to use it again. Instead, I can just get the symbol from, you know, over here. Uh, let me find it. Well, I really need to organize my stuff. <laughs> I can literally just find it right here. Boom. And then just drag it onto time like this. So, something like that. So, then you don't have to keep redoing it over and over again. Because that's, like, really annoying. So... There are three types of symbols, um, movie clip, button, and graphic. You normally don't need button unless like you're doing like a game or something. So, I don't know, you don't really need it. Uh, movie clip, movie clips are, are basically like, uh, symbols that you, okay, so, I don't know how to explain this. I'm sorry, not the greatest teacher, <laughs> but, um, basically, right, so for example, alright, so here, right, 18 is moving on the timeline with this graphic, and she is a graphic symbol. So, you can see that she's moving, she's animated, right? So basically, graphics are like symbols that you can see move on the timeline. Movie clips, however, movie clips are, um, you can't see it move on the timeline. So you can see that 18 goes from this frame, like this frame right here to this frame, right? 
if I was to make her a movie clip like this, you can see that, you know, she still hasn't changed her frame. And basically, movie clips are symbols that you can't see move on the timeline. So you would have to um, make it into a movie. So, oh, uh, I think I didn't explain. Yeah, I didn't explain movies. Um, but you know, we're getting to it. I'm sorry, I'm not the greatest teacher again. So I'm really sorry for confusing you guys. Um, so test movie is basically like just seeing how your like movie looks like. Test scene, basically the same thing. Uh, but it's a scene. If if you change something specific or something like that, or if you see, for example, are in a symbol. And if you want to see how it looked, then you can just go into here and click test scene, and then it would just show like the sprite itself doing its motion like that. So, um, let me, uh, there is, that's all I really use here. Um, there are the shortcuts for going backwards one frame and going forward, uh, play, rewinds, and go to end, which means go to the end of the file and stuff like that. Um, let me see, uh, oh yeah, so movie clips and graphics, right? So, yeah, as I said before, movie clips are something that you can see move on the timeline, but if something is a, hold on, let me try and go back to the frame where this started. Alright, right, so if something wants to be movie clip like 18 here, then now she's not moving on the timeline, you know, you can, she's just standing there. And you have to play, um, like, do the test movie, which, you know, I'm not going to do because it's going to take too long. Uh, you know, you would have to I look into movie or change her into a graphic and then back into a movie clip. Uh, however, movie clips do have some advantages. One thing, uh, you have blend options, which blend options are basically some of your best friends in terms of animation. There are a lot of things that you can do. There's uh, add, which... Add normally gets rid of background stuff, and so I only really use it for effects, so let me pull up an effect. There we go, right? So something like this. So let me go into my layer, do this, and then do that. So you can see that this thing has like some weird background stuff behind it, right? So if I was to press add, now it's just this color, it doesn't have the black on it. So um, there's also lighting, which does the exact same thing, except it doesn't like, you know, add like a lot of like brightness that add does but add sometimes unless adding brightness onto something is like good for the effect so normally i just use add uh, there's also screen which screen is basically just the same as lighten uh lighten is a bit darker though which is kind of ironic but whatever hard light uh overlay just some like you know overlay stuff like that um darken multiply there's not there's it, it's really pretty self-explanatory so oh yeah there's also filters which you can change you can add things like glows uh sometimes it might make yourself luck if you put on high so i wouldn't recommend it but no uh there's blurs which you know you can make uh you can put a blur on it and stuff like that i normally use blur for teleportation or kind of like a fast movement so uh bevel uh and you know just bevel <laughs> um and there's some other stuff here which i don't use i use uh adjust color adjust color is really good for say for example you want to change like your effect color uh this is really good if you want to do that so uh if you're using even if for a character if you want to change like the character's color or something then you can do that as well um let me see uh am i forgetting something Okay, uh, graphics do not have the same things as movie clips, so as you can see, so say for example I want to click um, 18, so the blend thing is um, blurred, not blurred out, but you can't change blends, and you can't add movie clips. I think on, I think graphics in anime, Adobe anime, doesn't, um, I think graphics in Adobe anime has filter, it has access to filters and blend, which is cool, but you know. I still recommend using graphics for things that you want to see in the timeline and movie clips for something that isn't really moving. So something like this. So you can see that Yomu only has one frame. Or Yumu, I think that's how you say it. Um, so right. Uh, so Yumu is only moving like, it, it, she doesn't have a frame. She only has one frame on there, so she's not really moving. So that's why I use movie clips for. 
Sometimes if I want a character to teleport while they're doing their thing, I might change them to a weak clip. Like, I might make them into a graphic like this and then see what their animation is before, you know, giving them the, turning them into a movie clip. Something like that. Um, anyway, yeah, that's the movie clips basically. So, and stuff like that. Uh, timeline, just messing around with the timeline stuff. Scene, basically the scene that you're on right now. Oh. Oh yeah, see, so you can make new scenes. I forgot. Uh, you can make new scenes if like your file is getting a bit too big. I don't know. I don't, I don't see much of a difference with it. Um, I think it like just frees up space if like your file is getting a bit too big or something. I don't know. Uh, document, just basically a document thing that we went over over here. Uh, convert to symbol, just converting something to a symbol. So for example, let me go back here. You can convert symbols into symbols. So uh, so something like this. I can go over here, compare her into a symbol like that, etc, etc. Break apart, basically just turning something back into a bitmap like this. Bitmaps are basically the things before they turn into symbols, so like this. This is a bitmap right here, and then you would um, go over here and then you can actually swap it into another bitmap, which is useful for things like, you know, animating um, like a whole like, you know, kick or something. Or you can trace it, which tracing bitmaps basically turn into a bit, turn Turn the sprite into a bit cleaner, a bit of a cleaner form. I don't, I don't really know how to say it, but it, it basically just heightens its quality up a bit. Uh, these are settings that you want for tracing bitmaps, by the way. I think if for new Flash users, it might be different. So if these are the settings you want to use, then you can just do this. And you turn it into a symbol like that. So pretty simple, pretty self explanatory. Symbol, you can duplicate or swap a symbol. So for example, uh, they're right here too, so I can just swap her out with another symbol, or I could duplicate her, and then I can just name anything I want. So, for shape, these are just for shapes, don't really use them, don't use this, uh, just more timeline stuff, more timeline effects. Uh, transform, you can turn her into free transform. Scale and rotate, make her bigger or smaller. Rote, oh yeah. This is what I normally use for uh, making the sprite bigger than just, you know, using free transform and then trying to make her bigger myself. Uh, it, it's just way more simpler than that. You can either flip her, um, you can flip horizontally or vertically. Uh, arrange, you can bring forward, back, blah, blah. Align, just aligning stuff. Uh, text, just text stuff. I explained what control was. Window, just adding stuff onto stuff like here. And window, just adding stuff onto the timeline and stuff like that. And I think that's it. Uh, I know that like this tutorial has been really bad, but you know, <laughs> how long are you recording for? It's 25 minutes. Jeez. Okay.